In this demonstration, we're going to use TKG, the command line interface, to actually deploy a workload cluster. Now, we already have deployed the management cluster. There was a previous uh, demonstration showing how to do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use that management cluster to actually create a workload cluster for us. And it is another TKG Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster. So you can see some of the help output here. I'll add a few um, additional help outputs as well. The first one here is for create. And you can see the various options that you can provide there. Um, but we're going to create a cluster. It is the only option available for that TKG create command. And when you do a TKG create on the cluster with the help option, you get a whole bunch of very useful information on how to create your command. So the first thing to note really is the plan. Um, again, you have the plan, a dev plan, which is just one control plane node and one worker node. But if you do a production plan, you can see there that you can vary the number of control plane nodes and you can vary the number of worker nodes. So it is very configurable. Um, so when we create our, our cluster, we'll, we'll set a, a control plane and worker node count. And the final thing there to show you is just the size. These are the size of the nodes from a resource perspective, and vSphere has a number of different options for the nodes that you can uh, deploy out. So let's go ahead and let's create our workload cluster. I'm just gonna call it Cormac-workload, and then I'm going to specify the plan, and I'm going to use a production plan, but I'm only going to use a single controller node, but I will add three worker nodes, and I'll just set to size to medium as per that example there just from a resource perspective for these nodes. So we'll kick that off. And again, thanks to the uh, video, we can actually speed things up a little bit, but it only really took six to seven minutes to actually deploy the whole thing in real time. So now we're waiting for the cluster, cluster to be initialized. You can see that we have the control plane. We also have the HA proxy deployed as well. And now we're just waiting for the worker nodes to be deployed. So I can speed that up once again. Um, you can see that actually some of the tasks associated with the, uh, the workers um, appearing just now. So you can see the, uh, the cloning of the template. Uh, that's the template that we set up when we deploy the management cluster and all of our images are based off that template. And so it looks like our workers now, again, speeding things up, have been deployed and we have our single control plane and our three uh, worker nodes are there as well. Let's go back to the CLI now, see where things are, just waiting for the nodes to be available. And they should be available now, so that should almost complete the deployment. And there we go. Now, one thing that might catch you out is if you actually go looking at the configuration, uh, the contexts that are available, you don't see your workload context. So you have to get uh, privileges or the authentication, I guess, for want of a better description, against your workload cluster in order to be able to use it with kubectl or kubectl. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get to credentials that will update our configuration file or kube config file. And now what we can do is we can query the kube config file with the context and we should see the new context, which indeed we do, for our new uh, workload cluster. And now I can set the context to the workload cluster and let's take a look and do I see my uh, one control plane node and my three worker nodes? Yes, I do. And you can use it as normal now.